Hello, welcome back to tuning into the 7th Autumn 2024 update from Gaps of Weatherby. So here we go again. It's time to bring you another Autumn update. We're just did two or three weeks away from releasing NB Gaswell's Autumn forecast. Now we are right at business end of these uh, Autumn updates, but we've still got this one and a couple more to do before we get to the forecast itself. And uh, I shall get on the 7th Autumn update for you in a moment, just to say that first video is says our 6 UK weather forecast got the final gas weather study roundup of the year to come um, over this afternoon, probably about 1 o'clock, something like that, and uh, then we can be live at 6pm with our uh, Sunday evening live stream, so uh, be able to check in, have a chat, we'll do our 10 to 14 day, and of course it's Sunday live stream, so we've got to include some long range in that as well, and all of that is to come through the course of today. So, uh, epic day of content. Hope you enjoy it, everyone. And to show to Richard for our amazing autumn updates gift. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. The colour's so vibrant. Thank you so much, Rich. Fantastic, my friend. Thank you, show to Shrine Bruin as well, Richard Short. Shrine Bruin, hashtag Team Gab, working away for us on the uh, long range update. Shrine has sorted out all of the years for this update. So thank you so much to Shrine and thank you so much to uh, Rich. Okay, well, we're going to do a July data special for this one. So we'll start off with the uh, CT. July century temperature came in at 16.3, just 0.3 of a degree above 61 to 1990 average, 0.3 of a degree, I think, 0.4, um, no, 0.3, I think it is, of a degree below the um, 91 to 20 average, very close to average anyway. And so, for our first set of analogs, what we seven. Um, autumn update, we're going to be looking at uh, autumn's following July's with a CC range of 16.0, 16.6, places July 2024, nice slap bang in the middle of the range. We start with 1951, so um, July uh, 1951 had a CT between 16.0 and 16.6, autumn 1951 looks like this, high pressure to the east, low pressure out to the west. It looks quite unsettled, but also should be relatively mild autumn there. You would have thought. 1957 is a drier autumn, but it does contain a wetter, cooler September. But other than that, have above average heights over to the west of the UK islands. So it should be a drier, perhaps rather coolish autumn. A long gap then through to 1979. So next time we have a July city range of 16.0, 16.6 is uh, 1979. Autumn 1979 is a classic westerly autumn. Mile two, high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, bring the wind in from off the Atlantic like that. Then we have 1982. This is a very wet, unsettled and very mild autumn. But does contain a dry September, I think. So have a dry September in 82. And then we transition into uh, a wetter, milder pattern. Uh, I've got the autumn of 1985. It's quite an anticyclonic autumn with above average heights through the west of uh, Europe. It has quite a dry and warm September, I think. And also a lot of warm and often relatively dryish weather in October. And then it all flips around right at the very end of October. It starts getting much, much colder. And uh, we actually have a very cold start to uh, November in 1985 with easy winds. And it's one of those years that does have like severe frost and also in places a little bit of snow on the ground for bonfire night. So very interesting autumn, um, that one. How we go from like a lingering summer to an early winter pattern relatively quickly. Uh, next up, we've got 1992, the July city range of 16.0 to 16.6. This one, um, unsettled, below average heights covering most parts of the Europe. So it has quite an unsettled, wet and near average temperature for September. Then goes much colder, though, in October, especially the second half of October. has some uh, really harsh frost for, you know, for October. And then that sort of relents, that relaxes, and November is just generally unsettled, mild, and wet. 1996 shows up um, next. So the autumn of 96 has higher pressure uh, around the Azores and lower pressure towards Iceland. It looks like it should be a westerly autumn, um, but has a deep chop over central parts of Europe. So um, this one has a dry September, not overly warm though, but you know, quite a dry 
high pressure dominated September with a high high pressure centered towards Scandinavia. Quite a mild but uh, mixed October. Then it started getting significantly colder in November with uh, some early frost and also snowfalls in November 1996. 1997 is another relatively anti-cyclonic autumn, especially early on, warm, dry September. Uh, that lasts into the beginning of October, then we flip into a much colder pattern, second half of October again. And then November just unleashes the Atlantic, November 1997, breaks the drought that we've been in relatively consistently since like 1995, really. Um, a few wetter months here in America, of course, but generally we've been in a drought since about um, the spring of 1995. And, uh, you know, uh, the um, November 97, that really breaks it. And that's a very, very wet month. And then that set, sets us up for you know, what, what becomes a much wetter spell through the late 90s. Uh, we've got 2008. This is quite an interesting autumn with high pressure just out to the west of the country and low pressure is away to the east. This brings the wind in more northwesterly direction. So after a run of very warm and mostly dry September, Bismarck has a rather cooler and wetter September in 2008. Then we have uh, a very early cold snap at the end of October, but delivers some snow to lowland southern England, very memorably, very rare for snow to fall across lowland southern England in October. And then there's a huge cold snaps in uh, November as well, because it precedes the first of a run of cold winters for 0809. So that's quite an interesting autumn to be included in our analogs package. We've got 2009 then, and this is just a, a generally kind of mild and warm autumn, Pressure weight of north, high pressure down towards Spain, wind coming up from the southwest. So this has a very dry, not overly warm, but very dry and mild of an average September. Also an exceptionally dry October, I think, which is the driest since 1978, I think, in October 2009. Could be wrong about that. And uh, then it turns exceptionally wet in November of 2009, which is uh, very wet and also very by above. Absolutely no indication you notice there from the analogue, other than maybe the blocking here. Um, <coughs> so sorry, but absolutely no sign there within that auto analogue of, uh, of what's going to happen for the winter of 2009-2010. So uh, quite, quite an interesting uh, autumn again, that one. Then we've got 2015. This is uh, generally dryish autumn until late on. Then it turns mild and exceptionally wet. That's quite a cool September in 2015. Um, and then October, November, gradually pick up more of an Atlantic influence. Exceptionally wet in the northwest and also exceptionally mild in November 2015. And then last we got 2023, last autumn. And uh, this one generally an unsettled autumn with low pressure in off the Atlantic. Remember, it did have an exceptionally hot spell in September, though. And the first time we've had a 17 Celsius CT September was last year in uh, 2023. But once that hot spell broke, like after the first 10 days or so of September 2023, the rest of the autumn was increasingly unsettled. Right, let's put all of that together then. This is how all September's combined are looking uh, following July CT of 16.0 More of an anti-cyclonic influence for September this time. With higher pressure across the west of Europe, lower pressure is away to the northwest. That will bring the wind up from more of a southerly, southwesterly direction. Is that the sign of a change? You'll notice, but or you'll know, you've been watching the autumn updates regularly, that generally our autumn updates this year have been tending to favour um, uh, a cooler, wetter September pattern. Is that the start of a shift later on in the autumn updates to uh, a drier, warmer September pattern? All October's combined strengthens the anticyclonic signal quite a lot across Western Europe. So, uh, again, we see uh, a dry, relatively mild signal. But then a big, big flip in uh, in November. All November's combined look very unsettled. Look at that deep low pressure in the Atlantic and across Northern and uh, Western Europe. So, September, October, relatively dry and warm signal. And then a much wetter pattern. Probably relatively mild, but much wetter pattern for um, the Novembers. And all autumn's combined, following a July CT, a 16.0. 16.6 looks like this so overall it's an unsettled signal but that is mainly down to november 
actually. And we know that September, or particularly October, has a, has a drier and warmer signal. Right, well, that's the first set. Let's go straight on, have a look at England Wales precipitation for uh, July. So uh, we came in at 89.4 millimetres for England Wales precipitation uh, during July 2024 which is actually 124% of average. So it was a slightly wetter than average July, which uh, I find a little bit surprised because it wasn't that wet here, but I know some places did have quite a wet July. Um, anyway, so... <coughs> so sorry again, everybody. The uh, range we're looking at this time uh, is autumn's following of July. England aware of range of 74 to 104 millimetres. Then places July 2024 nicely in the middle. Thank you, so to Shrian for working that out. So here we go then, we start off with 1953, the autumn of 1953 is a generally drier and warmer with high pressure over to the eastern country, winds probably coming up a southern direction quite a lot of the time. Have 1954, this is a, uh, it's a wet autumn, um, no high pressure in 53, low pressure in 54, uh, deep low pressure off the ice, it has a cool wet September. Um, and the rest of the order just generally mild and uh, unsettled too, I think, in 1954. They've got 1950s, lots from 1950s, interestingly, for this analogue set. Um, this one is an anti-cyclonic autumn, a drier, generally quite mild autumn, following on from an exceptionally wet and uh, very cool summer. We've got 1958 also showing up with an anti-cyclonic signal. This one also, though, has a wet September, followed by a drier pattern, I think, for October and November. Our next year is 1965. This is a cold and wet autumn. High pressure to the north, low pressure south winds in from the east. I think this one has um, quite a coldish spell in, uh, in um, November 1965 with some early snowfalls. This is a 1960s autumn slash winter, but most of them were cold. <coughs> Oh dear, let's persevere. We've got 1973 coming up uh, next. This one is a drier, quite anti-cyclonic, I think relatively mildish sort of autumn, perhaps with one or two cars. That's one to forget, I think, in 1973. 1978 shows up next. One in England Wales to range of 74 to 104 millimetres. This was a very dry and warm autumn. High pressure anchored and rooted over west of Europe. Low pressure is a way to the north. Um, so the thing with that autumn is very dry and quite mild in September. Exceptionally dry October in 1978 as well. Generally very dry and mild also through most of November. But then suddenly, and you don't get it from the analogue, what's going to happen at all there. But suddenly for the last week or so of November... 1978, the heights to the south collapse, the low pressure plunges southwards along with the jet stream, and we start going off and running, building the building blocks into what becomes an exceptionally cold winter for 78, 79, the last time we had a sub-zero CT January was in 1979. Get absolutely no indication of that from the autumn analogue. Again, just going to show that uh, sometimes autumn will give you a heads up about what's to come. The winter ahead, thinking like of 2010. Sometimes, though, you get no heads up at all, no indication at all from um, the autumn about the winter ahead. And 1978 is a good example of that. Right, let's go on then. Go on to 1980. Quite a good bit, isn't it? Um, put in a little bit more info to this one. Uh, so, 1980, just generally quite a mild autumn, but I think it does have a cold snap in early November. 1985, it's back again, anti cyclone Iconic, generally mild autumn through um, September and October, as we explained, turns much colder at the beginning of November. You've got 1992, that one's back as well. So this one quite um, quite unsettled autumn. Again, has that big cold snap um, in the latter part of October 92, but does not herald a cold winter. You've got 1993, this is a cold autumn. High pressure generally centred to the north, low pressure to the south, winds in from the east. So that has a very wet and cold... <coughs> <coughs> 
God is gracious me, so sorry anyway. That has a very wet and cold spell in September, late in September. October, quite cool and, uh, you know, early frosts and whatnot. And November's cold in 93 as well, with uh, easy winds and early snowfall. So that's the last time I think that we had, like, a, what I would class as a genuinely cold autumn from start to finish. And um, our is showing up in uh, our July England precipitation ratio of 74 to 104 millimetres. You've got 2002, so this one has a warm, dry September, then turns uh, much wetter in October, very wet October, and also a wet uh, November as well. 2004 has uh, high pressure, lots of high pressure. Maybe Atlantic, which is another warm and dry September, followed by a much wetter October, and then um, November is just generally nondescript, quite mild and relatively, you know, relatively average. We've got 2005, which is an exceptionally warm autumn. High pressure across northern and western Europe, dragging up wind from the south. So, very, very warm, hot September, really. Uh, CT in the 15 Celsius bracket. Um, also, very warm, hot October in the 13 Celsius CT bracket. First half of November is very warm as well. 2005 was very mild. Um, then it flips. Second half of November turns much colder. Um, with, uh, with with some uh, late season or some early season snowfalls, I should say. Late season for autumn, but early season for winter snowfalls. Um, then we have 2015, that's back again as well. So it turns exceptionally mild and very wet in November, setting up the warm winter, I say warm, warm winter of 2015-16. And lastly, I think it's lastly, isn't it? We've got 2021, yes it is. And um, this one has a very warm September and then gradually starts turning more unsettled and cooler as the autumn progresses. Right, so... <coughs> Grace me, I better get this wrapped up. We lose my voice a lot, Kev. Putting all that together, this is how all September's combined are looking following a July England Wales precipitation range of 74 to 104 millimetres. Overall, we're we'll back to an unsettled signal. Interesting, isn't it? The first set uh, for the CT favoured um, higher pressure and drier, warmer September. This one takes us back to like lower pressure and unsettled September favoured overall. Bear in mind, there will be years of deviating. 1978, for example, is deviating. So to 20, 2002, 2004, for example, they were dry and warm. Warm at September's. Uh, all October's combined goes anticyclonic on average with high pressure across Western Europe and in the North Atlantic. So a drier, warmer October favourite. Again, going to be years of the deviating on that. For example, we've got 2004 and 2002, which were both uh, wet in October. And then all November's combined look like that with high pressure generally just to the west of the country, so still an anti-cyclonic signal, a little bit of cold snap potential maybe, wind sometimes going into the north there in some of those um, Novembers. Lastly, all autumns combined, following a July England Wales precipitation range, 74 to 104 millimetres, looks like that. It is an anti-cyclonic signal with above average heights across the UK and Ireland, Bear in mind, September obviously is a much more unsettled month in this set, um, with high pressure coming into play in October and November. Uh, right then, so we're done. I thank so much everyone for tuning in to our. How long are we talking for? 18 minutes? Quite a decent length. Thank you so much. <coughs> Sorry, sorry again, everybody. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to our seventh uh, autumn 2024 update. As I said, we've got, just got two more updates to go, one more season one roundup, and then we're releasing regards whether this autumn forecast on the 25th of August. So it's all getting very exciting. We're on the fire on the final rundown, on the home stretch now to um, the auto forecast and uh, a couple more updates to go and then it will be release day. Thank you to Richard for our amazing gift and thank you to Shrian sorting out the years and we're going to be back a little bit later on with uh, the final Gals Webby Sunday Roundup of the year and we'll be live at 6pm with your 10 to 14 day so I shall see you a little bit later on uh, for that one. But for the 7th Autumn 24 update, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.